Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, got a big lump of a V6 on the engine stand where it's lived its life for the past two years whilst I've been working on the car itself. If you haven't seen any of the walkthrough videos on the chassis and where we're up to in terms of progression, if you click this link, it'll take you to the very first video I've uploaded, which is in January 2023, where the car hasn't been painted. It hasn't had much done to it other than the welding and the rear quarter and all that body work. I explain everything in that video. So if you click that link, you'll see it. If you've saw that video but haven't seen the next update, which is now July 2023, click that link and you'll see the car is being painted. There's a lot of it put back together. It's quite interesting to see how much has happened in the past five months. So yeah, check that out if you haven't. If you've seen both, thank you very much. Hopefully you click like and subscribe, maybe even turn on the notification bell so you get an update when I post videos. But in this video, it's the engine. It's not gonna be a walkthrough. I'll give you a quick glance around it to see what is actually going on, what state it's in, and how much work I've actually got to do. But this will be the start of a teardown series, recondition and rebuild of the full engine. And from there, we'll move on to the gearbox, get it into the car. So if you like engines, if you love cars, if you love doing your own work, DIY or not, stay tuned. So this is the engine for the Mitsubishi GTO I spent the past two years of my life trying to put back on the road. It's Mitsubishi's twin turbo V6. The engine code is 6G72. And this one is paired with a five-speed Gatrad manual gearbox. This engine was built in the 90s. If you didn't see 90s cars, you'll know that back in the 90s, most Japanese manufacturers had something called the Gentleman's Agreement. What that meant was, there were people getting into cars that were quite high powered, couldn't handle them, causing crashes. It just it gave a lot of hassle to the government. So what they done was, all the Japanese manufacturers got together and they set a horsepower bracket which they won't go over in terms of what the engines can do. I don't know if they stuck to that, don't think they did, if I'm being perfectly honest, but the way they built their engine, they built their engine so people can modify them to get above that horsepower of their own accord, which then takes away the liability on the manufacturers, but allows the customers to, to still have higher power engines. This engine can be modified, bit of a pain, but it can be done. You've just got to know what you're doing how to do it and when to do it because if you modify an engine that doesn't run initially anyway it's not a good time for yourself you'll waste money you'll waste time and you have to buy a new engine so with this one what we're going to do i'm going to step it down completely i'm going to clean it off first when i give you a walk around you'll see why it's covered in dust it's covered in spiders cobwebs you name it it's on there rust loves rust so we'll we'll tear it down we'll dig into it We've got a few parts there, water pump, timing belt, some idlers, there's going to be a lot more I'm going to need to buy for this. So if you stay tuned, we'll go through it all, you'll see exactly what I need to do, because there's a lot, and I mean there's a lot I need to do on this engine. But we'll build it up stock, and when we get it stock, we know it runs, when it's in the car, driving as it should, we'll then either take it back out, or we'll modify it in the car, but we will be modifying this engine eventually but I need to know it runs first. So in the next clip, I'll take you through a little walk around, show you what's on the engine. Well, everything's on the engine, but I'll show you what I haven't took off yet. And then in the next few videos, we'll strip it all down and we'll see what the story is and whether I'm happy with my purchase or whether I'm gonna need to buy a whole new engine. So here's the engine close up. As you can see, as mentioned before, there's corrosion all around the water pump all around the cooling hoses, well, the cooling port, should say. There's dust all over the HT leads, there's dust all over the top of the engine, the plenum, it's all pitted. Little twin turbo intercooler. Hopefully gonna get the, po the plenum polished, so it's nice and shiny, because I've got a polished white pipe to go on. The rocker cover, again, all dirty, that'll be getting painted after being cleaned. Timing belt covers were both there, which I'm happy with. However, the timing belt was changed, so I was told. But you can just about make out tiny little tears in the belt. Now, it hasn't really ran with that timing belt in, but the issue you've got is because it's sat for so long, so it's been sat for 10 years before I picked it up. Timing belt over time just deteriorates because it's rubber. 
Same for the auxiliary belts, same for the power steering pump belt and all the tensioners, idlers, you name it, they're getting changed. The alternator still works as far as I'm aware, as does the air conditioning compressor. Still spins, took the tension off the belt, but I don't know if the clutch engages, so that's one thing I need to check. If not, I'll strip it down, try and fix it. If I can't, I'll change it. These harmonic balancers are in two parts. So there's the center one, which bolts to the crank. Then you've got the rubber intermediate part, if you will, I don't know what it's called. And then the outer, which drives the aircon pump and the alternator. So they, between these two, when the rubber deteriorates and shrinks and cracks, they separate. And you don't want that coming off whilst you're driving because it takes everything out around it. You lose your aircon, you lose your alternator. It's not a fun time, it just needs to be changed. And then the power steering pump on this engine for this year, it's ran with a V belt. Whereas on the year after, I believe, it's ran with a rib belt like these. So there's a few little differences between them all. So you just need to know what you're going on about, what you're working with and how to fix. These are the tiny turbos. Again, that's my hand. I've got average size hands with that turbo. Dinky. It's only small. One on the front. Hey, sorry. One on the back. And then one down here on the front. Again, they're only small. Ideally, well, I say ideally, I will recondition the turbos before they go back on. I don't want them going bang and taking the engine with them because then that kind of defeats the object of everything I've done. But as you can see, it's not clean. So we'll get it cleaned down. We'll do what we can on the outside and then we'll start to strip everything out. Throttle bodies all in good condition. All still works. These throttle bodies are water cooled. So the coolant runs through the throttle body. Don't know if that's to set the air fuel mixture based on temperature, but that's how it's designed. So we need to make sure that doesn't leak. All the plugs are in good condition. They, they haven't snapped, they got lucky taking them off. And yeah, let's dig into it. So, give it a brush down, give it a hoover. Got a fair bit of the dirt off, a lot of the surface dust. There's a fair bit still embedded into everything, but as you can see, there's a lot going on, so you can't get to it all. But it's looking a lot better. Didn't take much, as you can probably guess. But the first thing we'll do is take the timing belt covers off. And then after that, we'll remove the plenum because I can guarantee underneath this, it's going to be a lot more dirt, a lot more grime. And I suppose it's the first logical step to stripping the engine down. So as I said before, the first thing we'll do, take these covers off. They are bolted down, but the bolts are already taken out. I can't remember if I did that or not, but the main thing is they're not bolted in. Now that the covers are off, you can clearly see the timing belt. The water pump situated down there, that will get changed as well. But, like I said before, take the plenum off, see what's underneath it. On these jack cars, typically, a lot of the bolts, you tend to see 12 mil or 12 millimeters. So it's fairly simple when you're stripping stuff down. You don't have to swap your tools out all the time, but it's always good to have a different selection of tools to keep you busy and allow you to keep working on the engine or whatever it is that you work on. So I'll crack them all loose before I take them off completely. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts on the front that are easily accessible when the engine's in the car. But then there are one, two, three at the back, 
when you ended in the car, they're a pain to get to. You can get to them, but they are, they're not the easiest to gain access to. So again, crack them loose. And now that all the bolts are loose, we'll go through, we'll take all the bolts off and we'll organise everything. So if you ever want to do a rebuild or you're going to strip something down or you've got a project, the best thing I could recommend, and I'd say this time and time again, is Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags are great because you put all the bolts that are in a group in the bag, you write on the bag what area they're from, where they're from, whatever you want to do with that. Just label them up, keep them all together, and then as you're going back through it all, when you come to assembling it all back together, you know what bag to grab for what bit you're working on. You know how many bolts you had initially, so then you'll know what you need to replace. If you get replacements, you'll know what types you need to get. They're just the great. I can't sing the phrases more than I have, but I would highly recommend this because you've saved me on multiple occasions. So get you just my bags. Open it up, and as you're taking the bolts out, we'll just throw them in the bag, and we'll label on the bag, trying to so let me know where they came from and where they're going to go back to. And we'll just take the plug bracket off, so let me lift the them off. We don't end up with cables, tying this down to the engine. Pulling it all back. It'll just be awkward to turn it Take them off, put the bolts back on the holes, that's another technique you can use. Again, it helps in multiple different scenarios, but if you remove something like brackets, if you can put the bolts back together. It, so if you can put the bolts back where you got them from, it saves you the hassle of trying to figure out what bolt went there later on when you come to put it all back together. So now we've took all the bolts out the front of the plenum even the corner nuts, which they're on studs. Took the three bolts out the back, so there's one there, one in the middle, and then one just in the corner down the bottom. And then on the side, like I said before, the throttle body on this engine is water-cooled, so these two hoses, again, not in great condition, like, but these two hoses come off, so you've got to take them off that one there, and the pipe at the back. And now that that's disconnected and the plenum's unbolted, we can lift the plenum and the throttle body off the engine and we can see what the mess underneath the engine is like. And like I said, by the way, this is the cooling cap. That's the inside, so uh, it's going to be a, a thorough rebuild, to say the least. So now that everything's unbolted, we'll uh, grab the plenum, give it a little wiggle because, again, it's been stuck on here for years. Give it a lift off, remove the brackets. The one little vacuum hose I forgot about here. We'll just give that a quick pull. And then the plenum lifts off. And um, what's the one? Yeah, again, another vacuum hose. We'll just give that a little pull. The plenum is off. It's a bit dirty, but it's not bad. The gasket's here, which is good. The gasket looks okay. And again, more dust. Just gonna need to go clean as, as I mentioned it is on. Put the plan on down here somewhere up the way. And I'll show it. Again, a bit dusty, nowhere near as bad as I expected it to be, if I'm being perfectly honest. Inside, the intakes doesn't look too bad. It will get cleaned. I don't want to leave it dirty, especially at this point. There's the two fuel rails, see them running down. Got your injectors. All six. HC leads in the back there getting checked. And that is what the V6 looks like from above. Right, so it gives you a little walk through and out. You know, if you can see me. And how you took the plenum off. Um, that process I've used to do the plenum, I'm going to use for everything on the engine. Crack it all loose, take it all off, do it piece by piece, because if you do it all at once, you get confused. 
Last thing you want to do is get confused, struggle to put it back together and then I'm stuck with a block and not off. So I'm going to put you in a little time lapse. If there's things I notice or things worth mentioning, I'll interject so I'll slow the, I'll either slow the time lapse down or I'll just cut in with a new clip. But if you won't miss anything. This isn't really that interesting, it's just a case of cleaning stuff off. Um, but again, like I said, if there's anything worth mentioning, I'll cut in. And I'll show you the evidence so you'll know just as much about this engine as I did. And hopefully we don't find anything that's too terrible. So I'll see you in a bit. So I've started looking at all the HC leads. They all seem okay. No nicks, no tears. Could definitely do with a clean up, but we know this. Um, all the plugs look okay and from what I can remember I didn't have any misfiring issues anyway so I'd like to think that you're, they're all in good working order but again because it's been there two years since you've last run I don't know coil packs look okay the brackets a bit rusty some of the base of the coils are a bit rusty so maybe you need new coil packs but I'm not too sure yet um, we won't know until we try and turn the engine over and it doesn't work. Or I'll try and find a way to test the coils with the multimeter, see if the resistance values are in the right area. And we'll go from there. Oh, and one more thing I would recommend, especially if you're doing something as intricate as this, is before you strip anything down, I've already done it, so that's why I'm not that fussed at the minute, but before you strip anything down, take a lot of pictures, take videos, anything you can look back on to help you when you put it all back together, because I found in the past, mainly on a chassis, which isn't that bad, so I figured it out in the end, but I put things together that look like they go a certain way, and when I look back on pictures, I realise they've been wrong. So, pictures, great help. If you can find the manuals, that's even better. I found the manuals for this online, so I got really lucky with that. So when I get stuck with all the tolerances or where things go, what goes in first, the vacuum lines, the fuel lines, coolant lines, any of that stuff, if you can get manuals or take a lot of pictures first, it will help you so much when it comes to putting it all back together. And it's also good to look back on and think of what it was before you finished the project. So I'd recommend it for both of those reasons. But yeah, just thought to jump in with that because again, it saved me on multiple occasions. So, the intake runners are out, the fuel injections are out, injection, the fuel injectors are out. The fuel rails down there, ignition, plenum, uh, intake runner, only assume. The gaskets are still on here, but they feel very, very thin, you can see that one peeling off. So they're all getting changed anyway, I'm not that bothered about that. So this is the tube that comes from the water pump comes around the back and it goes to this which then takes it down to the radiator to get cool come back back up through the engine and so on and so forth but let's uh, try and get off the light it's quite rusty which isn't a shock but it's not too bad it is fixable and we can eventually get this going again put you back on the time lapse There are the bolts from around the water pump and as you can see they're probably the worst in terms of corrosion. If I can replace them I will, if not I'll definitely be taking all that rust off and retreating them so that doesn't happen again. So this is how bad the cooling journals are inside. I can only imagine what the inside of the engine's actually like. 
with this here. This is a coolant line going straight to the back turbo and as soon as I pulled the hose off, the end came with it. So I'm probably going to try and buy some pipe for that. Make some new lines, the only issue is the banjo fitting on the end. So I might just have to buy a whole new pipe for this if I can't make new ones. But yeah, don't you just love rust? Sometimes even with the most care, you lose. Right, so made a bit of a rookie mistake there, nothing too terrible, but this is the, the cool one. I don't even know what it's called, I'm being perfectly honest. But when I knocked it off, these two pipes here run all the way down the back, and then similarly all the way down on the front for the waste gates. They're bolted to this. <clears throat> I didn't realise, but nothing bent, nothing snapped. I got lucky. So there's a little bolt there, there's one there, and then there's one right round the back. Behind there, it's hard to see, but you can't get to it. So I'm gonna have to unbolt them, and then this whole unit, because it is quite loose, should just come off. I'm half disappointed in myself because I've only just realised that's the thermostat housing. Struggled to remember what it was called. Yeah, yeah. Don't think you can see on the camera, but the thermostat's definitely <laughs> gonna need changing because that is the rustiest, the rustiest thermostat I've ever seen. But yeah, she's out. It's not great, you can see. Rust everywhere. Gaskets failed on that side, hence all the corrosion. But it's a good job we're doing everything, isn't it? So, the thermostat housing's off. That has been the focus. That has been mangled for some reason. I know you may think it was me, but it genuinely wasn't. I'd just tell you if it was. But the pipe is full of rust. I don't think you can see there. The port's going into the engine. Again, no better. That side's horrendous because the gasket failed. Which explains all the corrosion further down. But again, even the back side isn't the best. So now that that with the focus. Now that that end's done, I'm gonna move to the back and try to remove the rear turbo without snapping any bolts. I'm not, I'm not confident in the idea of it, but we need to get it done because we need to remove this, which is the oil line for the turbo from down there, from the pump. And then we've got the oil return line underneath this corrugated pipe, that's gonna have to come off. Otherwise you won't be able to pull the turbo out. And then this here, oh, sorry. This here tells me that the coolant lines for the turbo have been leaking. Or oh, luckily, it might just be corrosion. 
but either way it's not great but yeah spin the engine I'll spin the engine put you back on the stand and then uh, we'll time lapse me trying not to snap any turbo bolts but I can't guarantee anything so I messed up a little bit probably down to an experience. After recording the engine video I went home to edit the footage and I realised the video itself is going to be about 40 minutes long. 40 minutes for me is too long so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this video here, this will be part one, and then in the next upload that will be the second half of what I've recorded which will then be part two. So if you stay tuned for part two you'll then see what happened in the next part of the clip I've cut and then from there after will be part three and i'll try and make the videos consistently about 20 25 minutes so it's easy watching and you can stay up to date with what i'm doing and when i'm doing it so thank you very much for watching like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one